If I could have your attention here in the media center, we'll continue on with our media availability for tonight's Bojangles Southern 500. We are joined by Crew Chief Cole Pern and Furniture Row Racing GM Joe Garoni uh, with the auto, number 78 Auto Owners Insurance Chevrolet for Furniture Row Racing. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, Toyota. Yes, thank, th thanks for reminding me of that, Joe. Uh, but Cole, could you talk talk to me about this win? Uh, you were here. You were here with the race team when it got its first win here at the Southern 500. How sweet is this victory tonight? Yeah, and honestly, I had somewhat of a similar feel. I I thought no way we'd win. You know, when the one we won five years ago, and I thought midway through the race there was no way we were going to win tonight. So, uh, you know, we just kept plugging away on it, and um, you know, we had one run in the middle race where we, you know, we kind of made some more aggressive adjustments and took off, and we weren't very good. And you know, I was kind of like, oh no, kind of the wheels are wheels were going to fall off but we uh it started to come around in that run and we just you know we got really good and you know kind of gained a direction to work and then you know just as the race went it just got better and better you know we get better track position the picker just did an unbelievable job you know we just had the night we needed we haven't uh we've had a lot of fast cars here lately but just having uh you know re haven't really had the night you know go all our way so it was nice to nice to have it go the way and then the best car was was you know the last run of the race and uh luckily we were able to drive and get it done Joe, that number 78 Toyota has been a dominant car this season. And what, what's it like now to see that dominance pay off with getting multiple wins? Well, it's great. It's, uh, it's been a rough season, uh, but uh, it's hard to have speed. And uh, Cole and the guys, they've been bringing speed in the cars just every weekend. And we've had a flurry of it, either it's mistakes that we've made or just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And where it's all come together finally. Uh, especially where we're at, getting ready to go into the chase here shortly. It's, it's just perfect timing. We'll open the floor to qu for questions. If you have a question for either of these gentlemen, please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. We'll start with Bob, and then we'll go upstairs to the press box. Uh, Bob Pockers, ESPN. Cole, a lot of people would say that winning the Coke 600, winning Dar here in Darlington would make a great season. Um, does it make a great season, or does or does your season is your season defined by what happens uh, starting at Chicago in a couple of weeks? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we still got uh, still got eleven races left, and you know we got Richmond next week, and then into Chicago. So it's uh, a lot of work and a long way to go. You know, we've uh, we've prepped all this year to you know try and make it to Homestead again and win the championship. So that's definitely the goal. But you know, to win you know win two Crown Jewel races like this in one season is you know something you'll never forget for sure. Um, you know, regardless of what's happened, so you gotta you gotta take the highs when when they're here, and then and then get back to work and and uh, be ready to give it hard the rest of the season. Okay, we'll go upstairs to the press box for a question. No, and he's not allowed to come here anymore. Additional questions downstairs. We'll go back to your left of Mike Neff. Mike Neff from FrontStretch.com for Cole. Uh, the 78 seems to have a lot of speed on intermediate tracks for sure. And with the predominance of intermediate tracks in the chase, does that give you an even greater feeling of confidence going into that final 10 race stretch? Or is it all a matter of the fluidity of this sport can change at any minute. Yeah, I mean, it for sure can change any minute, but they are. I mean, they, we have, uh, you know, we have a lot of great tracks that, you know, we ran really good on earlier in the year that are in the chase, and, you know, we kind of had the same same thing happen to us last year. You know, we ran really good at those tracks early in the season, so we feel like we got, you know, a real good understanding of what we need to do there. So, but, you know, at the end of the day, that's why, you know, you still have to run the race, and you never know what's going to happen. But, you know, definitely, uh, definitely gives you confidence to know, you know, you know what you need to do, and you know the direction you need to work. So, I, you know, I'm really, I'm really hopeful that plays to our strength. Any additional questions downstairs? Let's go back to Bob. Cole, do you feel at all for the four team? I mean, knowing, I mean, you guys have had pit crew stuff and things happen to you this year. Is there any? Can you kind of tell us kind of what they're going through right now? Yeah, I feel like. They're the only thing, my only sanity check. So I'm like, well, at least it happens to them too, <laughs> you know. So it's, uh, I feel bad for them for sure. I mean, it's, uh, it's not easy. They had a great car again tonight, um, you know, to have the issues they had. But 
I don't know. I mean, it's just it's a team sport, you know, like it or not. You can, you know, you can have one side like one side of the team doing great and and the other side struggle. And you know, that's where I just I was so happy for our picker tonight. You know, we we got to make so many pit stops here, and it was just the perfect night for them to get in a rhythm. And you know, I really credit a lot of the win to them. So. Additional questions. Go back here. Hey, Cole, Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. At one point, Martin was screaming over the radio about he's loose, he's tight, he's horrible, everything's going to hell. How do you kind of regroup in the middle of that and, and come back and get everybody calmed down and win? I don't know. You just shake your head. I mean, that was the oddest thing ever because the run he was screaming like that, it was five laps later we were the fastest car on the track, so I don't really know. So we had, we had planned overhaul changes, and then we threw them all the window and didn't really touch it after that. So it's just a... Yeah, I think it's just a product of these rules. I mean, you know, the cars are, you know, the cars are on edge, and then this track is just really difficult to get a hold of. It's low grip, so you know, you find a, all of a sudden you find a groove that you know suits your car better, and and then you get to run run them good again. So it's uh, it's really fun. I mean, all weekend, you know, you're really uh, you know, you're having to you know think outside the box. You know, maybe more so than the typical intermediates because you got asymmetric corners and low grip and bumps. You know, it's got really all the elements that really make you work on the race car. Any additional questions? Well, gentlemen, congratulations on grabbing another Southern 500 win, and uh, good luck next week in Richmond. Thank you. Thank you. We will continue on with tonight's post-race media availability for the 67th annual Bojangles Southern 500. And we are joined now by today's race winner, Martin Truex Jr., driver of the nine, number 78 Auto Owners Insurance Toyota for Furniture Row Racing. This is Martin's fifth victory in 394 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series races. It's his second win and 11th top 10 finish in 2016. And one of the coolest stats I can read off, this is is his first multi-win season of your career. Congratulations on making it to Victory Lane again here in the Southern Five. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, been quite a weekend, quite a night. So, uh, you know, it's just it's amazing to, uh, to win a race like this. I mean, the Southern 500 is just, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the ones everybody wants to win. And. You know, coming in here this week, I knew we'd have a shot at it just based off the way we've been running, you know, this season. Um, but, you know, to uh, to finally get it done and bring home the, the victory and go to victory lane here, it was uh, it was pretty amazing feeling. So really, really proud of my team, obviously, for uh, for all they do for me. And and uh, just can't believe we won here at Darlington. It's awesome. Good deal. We're going to open the floor to questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. We'll start with Pete. Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. Martin, when um, it, it looked like you guys were biding your time for quite a while there, did you think you'd have enough for Kevin, or did you think that you know I was it ahead would of eventually Kevin. come around? Huh? I was ahead of Kevin. No, I mean, I mean, at, uh, <laughs> Kevin was out in the in front for such a uh, oh, uh, I don't know, so many long. You know, at at that point in time, honestly, uh, we weren't all that great. You know, we our car was. You know, we were probably, I don't know, we ran third or fourth to maybe seventh or eighth all night long, you know, in there, in, in there, and just, um, you know, we never could get it quite right, and it was always too tight or too loose or too tight or too loose, and I think it was about 80 or 90 to go, we made an adjustment that just woke the thing up, and uh, after that, it was, you know, it was pretty good, and then we made it even better on the last stop, so just uh, just worked hard on it all night, honestly. I mean, you know, I, I can't believe – with 100 to go, I thought there's no way we can win this race. You know, we're going to run – you know, we might, might run top five. But, you know, we just uh, – we kept digging. We never gave up on it. And uh, guys made good adjustments. Pit crew stepped up and, uh, you know, got us the lead there at the end. And we were able to hold on to it. So uh, just proud of that effort. And, you know, it's 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 funny. We've we've had the best car in a lot of races and not won and tonight for the most most part of the race we didn't have the best car so it's uh, definitely a sweet feeling to come to victory lane and uh you know be able, be able to overcome that and uh you know make our car the best that we could at the end of the race and uh, and, and ultimately you'll know, get the job done okay we'll stay in the middle and go to bob and then over to the left of mike uh bob Parker, cspn a lot of people say win at charlotte big memorial day race win here and that's a great season uh yeah 
does, I mean, would you consider this a great season no matter what happens the next 11 weeks? Um, it's been a good season. It's got potential to be a really great season. I think that, you know, based on the team we have and, and the way we've been running, I mean, you know, I, we could honestly be sitting here with seven, eight, nine wins if, if you know, things have, had gone a little different here and there. But with that being said, we've got two, and I really feel like we've got a, a legitimate shot at this championship. So um, it's been a good season, but it definitely could be a great season. And, uh, you know, until Homestead's uh, done and gone, we won't know. So uh, looking, just looking forward to that opportunity to work with this team and, and uh, try to go after our first championship. We – you know, we had a shot at it last year and uh, didn't really have the performance at the end of the season that we needed in our race cars. And I feel like this year with the speed we've had in, the, in our Toyotas that we can go to Homestead and uh, and really have a shot at this thing. So definitely focused on uh, on the chase starting and hopefully I'll be able to put those results together and, and make it to that Final Four again. We'll go to your left, the mic, and then over to your right, the window. Mike Neff from FrontStretch.com. Martin, uh the switch over to Joe Gibbs' affiliation this year, can you just speak to how you feel that has changed or improved the performance at Furniture Row? Well, I mean, we have, you know, we have four guys that we can lean on, four teams that consistently win races. Um, you know, they have two champions over there driving those cars and, um, you know, a couple other guys that could easily win one, you know, or probably will at some point in their career. And uh, just to work with, you know, with everybody they have there in general. I mean, you look at the performance of that, that camp for, you know, the past 10 years, they're always up front. And uh, it's just been, it's been really, really neat for them to welcome us into their, to the organization, to trust us and, um, you know, be willing to, you know, share their secrets and um, have that trust in us that we can, you know, bring enough to the table to, you know, on certain days help them as well. So it's been a great partnership so far. It, uh, it it got up to speed and all the 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 parts and pieces and you know traveling back and forth to Denver to North Carolina and all that. Um, the trust in one another, the the relationships between the crew chiefs, the engineers, all that stuff really progressed so quickly. And uh, I didn't I didn't anticipate it going as well as it did. Um, so I've got a lot of got to give a lot of credit to to Coach Gibbs to to Barney Visser. Uh, to Dave Wilson, Andy Graves, everybody at TRD for just, you know, putting all those guys together and saying, hey, you know, here's two great teams. Let's put them together and make one big, one really great team. And, uh, and you know, I've been the benefactor of that. So I couldn't be uh, more thankful, obviously. And um, it's been fun to work with all those guys this year. And we share setups and we share, you know, everything. Um, you know, so that uh, that works well. And you know, when one of us is having a bad weekend, they will put in, you know, somebody else's setup and and go to the races. So it's uh, it's been a good relationship. It's worked well for us, and it's one I think that, uh, you know, it's one of the big reasons why all five of our cars have been so competitive and have won multiple races. We're going to go to your right, the Wendell, and then we'll go back to Deb. I'm Martin Wendell Turner with Community Broadcasters. Uh, Indy has its tradition with kissing the bricks. You started a tradition here going back know. to the finish line there? I, I just had to. <laughs> hey, man, I loved it. I loved it. I mean, I, I mean I've, I've honestly, this has always been one of my favorite tracks. I've wanted to win here so bad. And I've led a, a bunch of races here in the cup car and, you know, felt like I was in position or had chances to win this race before. And um, or to just to win at this track in general, and and uh, you know I've had a few heartbreakers here, so to finally get it done was sweet. And uh, I can't I can't tell you how it felt. I mean, I honestly got you know I took the checkered flag and I was like I cannot believe I just won the Southern 500. And uh, you know the history, the the tradition here to see the Hall of Famers before the race and talk to Kale Yarborough and you know all those guys, uh, it's just amazing and and. You know, I'm I'm thankful to just to race here and and to get a chance to win here is just icing on the cake. So uh, it was just a, a special night for me, and it's definitely one I'll never forget. So it's uh you know Coke 600 and the Southern 500 in, in the same years is pretty awesome. Standard, right, Deb? Uh, Deb Williams racing today, Martin. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you. Kind of continuing in that vein. This sport's original triple crown was the Daytona 500, the Coca-Cola 600, and the Southern 500. And if you had 
Famous those inches at Daytona. Yeah. You would have been only the third driver ever to win the Triple Crown. Leroy Yarbrough <laughs> in 69 with Junior Johnson and David Pearson in 76 with the Wood Brothers. You want to comment on that? Uh, it, I mean, just to be, you know, to be mentioned with those two names is unbelievable enough. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't believe it. Um, you know, about a foot. <laughs> <laughs> about a foot from doing it is uh, is incredible i mean just you know there's so many things about this year that have been been special and you know that's one of them thank you for bringing that up and letting me know about it and um you know to lead the most miles of any nascar race ever i mean just you just think about the names you know the names that have been come and gone and and paved the way for us drivers that that none of those guys had done that before is is unbelievable and then you know to mention what you mentioned there. So um, I'm just humbled. I'm, I'm just proud to be in this position to drive for such a great team. And, um, you know, hopefully it's something we can continue to do here, uh, you know, the next 11 races. Thank you. Additional questions for Martin. Martin. Thank you, guys. Congratulations again on the win, and Thank good you. luck next week in Richmond. Yeah, thank you.